And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here. In the red corner, it, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, the man who the the crown the crownless king of the of the of the assassin order, and the <laughs> bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix, and in the in the blue cor in the blue corner, the man of a th the man of a thousand fists, the ma the man who, for whom roses are red, violets are blue. Omai wo shinderu. <laughs> That's great. Good, bro good brother Joel. How are we doing That's tonight? Me. I'm just a passing assassin. That's all. <laughs> passing assassin. Play no that more is... Heroes 3, but that's not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, as as has been made ver has been made very clear, Joel here Joel is a is a fellow aficionado of of Wuxia and Chancha like we like we are. Which which has been instrumental for hit for his two games, um, one Tian Shang All Above Heaven, and the other be the other being the currently in development Lone Wolf Fists, or what mm -hmm. happens when you throw Wuxia into into the world of of Hokuto no Ken and see what happens. Oh yeah, we we really put those bugs in a jar and shook them pretty hard for the game. So, mm -hmm. but as a as I was. Go now I've been following that particular project, and I've had you on for for it in the past. But as I as I was brainstorming ideas for future to, for future topics, um, I remembered a certain uh, I remembered a certain other game game that is very high up in my library that has a, that has a lot of those same those same wuxia influences. Not so much Tiansha. Mm. And well. That, and and I thought, why don't we combine these together? And with that brings us to this week's topic: class warfare, adapting Jade Empire styles to Lone Wolf fists. And since since this is, and given the traditions here in the temple, um, Zan, would you mind giving the um, skinny when it comes to Jade Empire, given how given how it's a game that's Jesus, 50, Jesus over 15 years old by now? Nearly 16, yeah. So Jade Empire is a very old game made by a studio may, you may not have heard of. Uh, it goes by the name of Bioware. Also known for uh, other, you know, lesser known games like Knights of the Old Public. You know. Or maybe Mass Effect. Maybe you've heard of that one. Yeah. The real, real independent guys. Thing. I never heard of those either. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, they, uh, they, total, they totally did not shit did not shit the bed trying to, trying to make an Iron Man looter shooter. <laughs> anyway, Jade Empire is a game that takes place in a f much more fantasy uh, version of China during the gunpowder phase. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a very rudimentary gunpowder usage for things like rockets. Uh, but it's also, like I said, more highly fantasized. Uh, your player is the last spirit monk, and that, as for what that is, that's a, a entirely giant backstory that we won't get into the nitty gritty of. Mm -hmm. That's the weeds right there. <laughs> but the draw that's of the this weeds. game was that, much like some of their other works that had the, especially Knights of the Old Republic, um, they had the whole morality systems that they had been known for at the time, and. Unlike other morality systems that they had come up with that were clearly light side is good, dark side is evil, because that's how the Force rolls, apparently, uh, you had the open palm and the closed fist, which more, more directly uh, seem, insp seem to be the inspiration for Paragon versus Renegade in the Mass Effect series, because it's not that you're good versus evil, it's more... Um, whether you're guiding or forcing your way through things. Uh, the open palm could be seen as, as uh, for anyone who's into particular um, particular martial arts, you could see an open palm style being like Aikido. And if we're talking closed fist, well, Wing Chun, because you literally punch your opponent to, into submission with that thing. 
uh, the, one of the bigger draws about the actual gameplay was the fact that this was a very rudimentary action RPG. Um, this is this is a game where the martial styles are actually done slightly as combos, and you did these combos in order to generate little orbs in the field while in battle to restore your three particular uh, resources, health, chi, and focus. Uh, health is exactly what it says on the tin. Chi is your magic, and focus is your stamina for specific styles, usually weapon styles. Uh, in so doing, it it got a really big cult following having to do with, you know, how to optimize the game, how to optimize your playthroughs, whether closed fist is better than open palm and vice versa. Uh, and it it really has this... It's not a large following, but it is a following. And to a lot of people who played it back when it first uh, released, myself included, there's a lot of not only nostalgia, but great enjoyment that came with this game. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, it, That's exactly the kind of... Like, speaking as a punch game designer, that's exactly the kind of crowd you want to draw. Like, you know, optimizers, people that want to argue and like passionately about, oh, this style's better, that style's better. Like people who want to tinker with it, and people that like sincerely have a good time playing it, man, um, I love. That's the audience. That is exactly the right audience. Yeah, and the other than just the styles existing, um, the best part about the game was you could switch from style to style in the middle of combat on the fly, and you often wanted to because starting what was known as a harmonic combo, the combos that when you end them and the, and the enemy dies, they generate that type of resource orb, uh, depended on what styles you used. Uh, m most of the martial styles were used to end harmonic combos. So you'd kill people with the normal martial styles, which are your, your punches and your kicks and your flipping around and all of the things that you expect from uh, Wuxia. But you'd set up the harmonic combos with things like your magic styles, which are throwing fireballs or throwing ice or throwing rocks or throwing the wind. You, you had your four Hel Hellenistic elements there. Um, or using support styles, which weren't necessarily damage type styles, but things that made, a com made combat a little easier. Um, such as Paralyzing Palm, the most overpowered support style in the game, which paralyzes somebody for like 20 seconds, I swear. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> That's like an eternity in fighting game time. That's an eternity and a half, and you can kill most mooks with like two seconds, so it was... Suffice to say, Paralyzing Palm was kind of OP when, once you got it leveled up. Uh... But, and then finally you had your, your weapon styles, which, as I said before, they use your, they use your uh, focus, but they also do a massive amount of damage. And there was also another reason to have multiple styles. Enemy types, certain enemies were immune to certain damage. Um, for example, uh, ghost enemies could not be hit by weapons. They were immune, completely. You try to use a weapon style against them, it shows the word immune above their head. Demon enemies are immune to magic styles. You try to shoot them with any magic, or not, not, not magic styles, support styles, excuse me. Um, that was the, you know, you couldn't paralyze them, you couldn't uh, shock them, you couldn't do any of the fun little status effects. And any status effects that were activated by magic styles, because you could set people on fire with your, magic, with your fire magic style, uh, also did not affect them. Um... So you, you wanted the versatility of having all these different styles, not only because of the harmonic combos, but because of the need to have different damage types for enemies. And then finally, frankly, most of the styles are really fucking cool to look at as you're using them, and switching between them and going, hi -ya, flippy flippy, throw some fireballs, go back to hi -ya, and you're, uh, you're just having a lot of fun at that point. I also note that they power up the really effective moves by mastery of like the, playing the punch style part of the game. Uh, I love that. <laughs> that's that's really clever. I actually I, I did something similar with Lone Wolfist too. Like because you come to that point where you realize you're designing a game that's about one specific thing and you want that to happen a lot, and it's easy to kind of get lost in the woods and do other stuff. But I like that these guys are smart to be like, okay, what what are the buttons they are pressing doing? The majority amount of the time it should be punching some guy in the face that's just a plus punch mm -hmm. game design right there and yeah 
one thing that he one thing that he forgot to one thing that he forgot to mention is when it came to when it came to the punchy, a lot of the styles have a um a bit of a rock paper scissors approach when it comes to when it comes to light, heavy, and area attacks. Yes, I uh, I didn't get in too much into the sticks with those, but you have your light combo attacks, which focus on a single a single uh, person and are stopped by a block. To get through a block, you use your heavy attack, which has a charge up time. And then if you want to knock over a bunch of mooks at the same time, usually you'd use your area attacks. Mm -hmm. um, most people that I know of use their magic area attacks so they can shoot them from far away and knock a whole bunch of people over and then rush in and do some punchy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, f the, only other, the only two other things I, sh I should note is that um, while Chi also... While Chi also is is mainly used for transformation and magic styles. You can use it to do some rudimentary healing. Yes, oh, you could you could heal yourself with your chi and then later absorb chi spheres or seek, seek a uh, chi a spirit font mm -hmm. to refill hey, your so chi. There, there's some there seems to be some cross pollination between the three powers and though, the three resources. Focus can be used for a kind of um, slowdown effect, but. It is advisable to normally use that for a second at most because it drains really fast. Not only that, um, focus was used for your sprint. Uh, anytime you used your sprint, you'd slowly drain focus. It also had the interesting side effect, and I'm sure this was by design. When you're sprinting, uh, color desaturates from the rest of the, of this environment and your character is the only thing that really has noticeable color left uh and you start throwing off little laughter images mm -hmm. uh finally focus was also used to avoid traps uh, if you had a high enough focus stat and enough focus in the actual focus bar um when you open a trapped chest of some sort you would automatically evade it um Again, if you had no focus left in your resource, and if your stat that derives focus was not high enough, you'd still get hit by the trap. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, all in all, it also, was... I, and again, uh, I, I love that <laughs> because you do more than just punching and kicking in these games. As much as I love the side scrollers and things like that, uh, which were universally punching and kicking, and in this game, as I recall, it was kind of more of like a three D sort of thing. Yep. So interacting with the environment is really important. And I like that there's bleed over between kicking ass and surviving all of the environment and dealing with traps and what have you. Again, it's just a really good, solid way of making a making a punch game. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I would like to make one correction on your statement earlier, Monk. Um, this game is very much ten, uh, it It's the magic styles, the demon styles, the fact that you go to both heaven and hell... And the fact that you're trying to restore a god as part of the entire journey is um is very much Xianxia uh, versus uh, just Wuxia. It's it's so hard. Well, those categories don't really even encompass the the massive range of stories because like really it feels like it's on that border between those two definitions mm -hmm. because like you have to put things like you know Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Journey of the West and stuff like in that border too because they they run the gamut of becoming being like a mortal who was practicing martial arts and then going all the way up to heaven and you know causing mischief on a universal scale so like it, there's there's a lot more bleed i think than those those categories would give the impression of man i we could have gotten jeremy on this one uh, that would have been great like he's <laughs> uh uh, Jerry Bai, right, of Righteous Blood, Ruthless Blade. Did you know he, uh, him and Brennan got nominated for an any, as I recall, for uh, Righteous Blood? I yeah. did. I did hear. I did hear about that. Um, it's nice to finally get some official recognition for those two. Yeah. Um, well, I've been I've been in uh, Death Blade's uh, Discord for a while, and I've been reading his translations of uh, of Wuxia and Xianxia novels for even longer. <laughs> um, I uh, well, he's, full he's disclosure, I was actually. Though. Yeah, I was actually a uh, beta reader for his uh, cyberpunk cultivation novels that he's been making for a little oh, while. That's, that's fucking sweet. Yep. They gave me a... I got a copy of uh, the one he did for uh, Ogre Gate. I haven't finished it yet, though. 
So I don't think that uh, he's getting a timely response on that one. Um. Well, at the at the very least, yet at the very least, he hasn't gotten mad at me for me for constantly picking on him about about the um about the coke incident. Where he was so tired, he mistaked a coke for a, was it a Coors Light? Yeah, and didn't re- didn't realize he was drinking Coors Light until he had ar- until he had already popped it open. <laughs> Silver yeah, I did that with uh, what did I do that with I did that with Mountain Dew and milk, and I tell you, if you're expecting Mountain Dew and you get a mouthful of milk, your first thought is, "Oh my God, I'm dying." <laughs> so, uh, but with but with all that said, um. I'd like to. I'd like to start. I'd like to. For this. For, for this. We're. We're going to. We're going to do the. Um, going to do. Going to do the styles that were. That were in. That were in both. That were in both the console and PC version. Since the um, PC version had a couple exclusive styles, which is why it's the better version of the game. Plus, it's the it's version that I'd probably recommend to people get on GOG, since you can get it on there for dirt cheap. Dirt cheap and DRM free. Yep. We st- we stand GOG around here because everything in there is DRM free. Yep. So the first, so the first one, it, the first one that we'll go with is uh, is a P- is a PC exclusive, and that is um I, that is Iron Palm. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so tell me about Iron Palm. All right. Um. Iron Palm is 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 a is a vi- I I will read for these I will read off the in-game description for them. Um, sure. And then, then I want your like take on yeah. it. That, that's a little more helpful too. But yeah. I'll t- I'll take the first part too. Is, Practitioners of Iron Palm throw their entire body into each blow, mixing open-handed strikes with powerful driving assaults. A low stance insur- ensures that each blow directs momentum from the user's entire body to hit with the force of a sledgehammer. This mixture of power, balance, and brute strength demolishes individual opponents as easily as it scatters groups. I do remember when I had unlocked Iron Palm, I um I joked I was making sumo jokes about it at times. Uh, it does sound kind of sumo-ish, doesn't it? Got a real E Honda vibe. Yeah. Um so Iron Palm uh has a lot of wide sweeping moves to it. It has a literal bull rush, um, and the stance that the that the characters take have their arms out very wide to the sides. It's very large in its movements, which is part of why it's slower. Yeah, it seems like there's also a deficiency with defense too. Like it's it's giving you an extra helping of offense to make up for the fact it really doesn't seem to be able to dodge well with that deep wide stance. Um, I I don't know if that's the case for real because dodging in a in Jade Empire was basically the same no matter what style you were in. They didn't mm, quite okay. extend mar- the martial styles into your ability to avoid damage. And again, it's a lot less sexy to make a really cool defense, especially when you have to hit a button to do an animation. Like it's hard to sell that to a player. It's easier to sell attacks because attacks are proactive. Mm-hmm. Um. In a, in a tabletop role-playing game, you have to think of both because you you choose your defense very proactively. And whereas in a in a, in a video game, it makes a lot of sense to have a very simple, easy to master set of skills for defending against attacks or dodging against them, like in Dark Souls. In a tabletop role-playing game, you need something a little closer to equitability, so that you're matching an active decision to attack with an active decision for defense. Um. It'd probably be helpful to think about it. You're right, certainly, but I mean, part of this is going to be retranslating it into yeah. what uh-huh. works in this uh, new medium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, with this one, actually, I one of the things that struck me about E Honda when I was studying Street Fighter Two uh, for translating some of the the Street Fighter isms into Lone Wolf Fist, and one of the things that's actually basic to uh, most fighting games is the idea of the reach of an attack and what you're able to command with that because space domination is such like it's it's basically like fighting game 101 and that includes your 3d fighters too i'm imagining that jade empire is pretty much similar to that where you kind of know the arc of your attacks and what like the hitbox for that looks like and you're able to kind of plan around 
and move your character as such to kind of maximize the amount of people that you're hitting and how often you're hitting him and minimize how much they can hit you back. Like, you know, that's kind of what makes yeah. a fighting game fun. And it's when you break it down and talk about it like that, it, it feels kind of clinical. But when you're doing it, it's really fun and engaging. Um, obviously, well, you can't do an exact def- uh, You can't exactly translate that feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, Jade you can. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Jade, Jade Empire had a, a notorious issue at, with the AI at, at one specific point. Um, and it has to do with a couple of martial styles we'll get to later. But some martial styles, yeah. their reach is extremely immediate. Mm. And if you whiff with your opener, the AI just walks backwards, and then you can't follow through. You, your your combo will continue going, but some martial styles do not travel very far forward as you're <laughs> using them. So now you're just punching it midair a little bit, and you have to stop your combo and move away, or hit the dodge to, uh, as soon as possible to get into oh, the man. next dodge it, frame. Fatal Fury was like that for me. I was used to Street Fighter, where you have this big, like, <clears throat> the hitboxes jump out in Street Fighter. When I went to SNK games, and, and especially Fatal Fury, oh my god, those hitboxes were like an inch in front of my my uh, damage box. And I was, I could not fight in those games. I'm like, I can't reach! Yeah, there's, um, there's a couple of uh, very infamous martial styles, including one of the starters that you get if you choose a balanced character. So... Uh, it, it's a it's a little a little iffy. There's also one martial style that much of the uh, Jade Empire community thinks is the best because the way it works is your combo carries you forward a lot, so you can follow your enemy for forever. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it sounds like the whole game kind of tilts into that. So yeah, it, it seems like that probably, as far as an intuitive, easy to use style, that might actually be the best. Just emergently from how people naturally approach the game. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, you can't really rely on that in a TTRPG world. I think that's a trick that's a little too simple for a tabletop role-playing game, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you'd get uh, cries of it being a one-true-way build, especially in a system like mine where I've got uh, hundreds of individual techniques and, like, however many builds that implies between the three archetypes. So, yeah, and Exalted ran into that a lot, the earlier editions did at least, where there was, like, the one thing you had to do to be the best, most optimal thing. Ox body and technique. How you doing? <laughs> Come on. Don't pick on poor Ox Body. It made sense before you did the math. After you did the math, yeah, it's stupid. But before you did the math, it, so it, feel, it felt like a good idea. Um, yeah, so with with this style, um, I'm kind of carrying over to way E. Honda, you're talking about like those wide stances. E. Honda actually moves like that. He's the, I know he's the sumo character, so it's kind of weird that there's crossover, but there really is. Like He has this huge box, both at the, the top at the bottom of the screen that just extends almost the whole thing. It just eats it. Mm-hmm. And it's if you don't have a good way to jump in and catch him from above, above that hitbox, it's real easy to just lose to his initiative because he'll catch you in it and then he'll charge because he like shoots himself more like a cannonball. And it's just over. The momentum is too much. Mm-hmm. And I think you can translate that part to a Lone Wolf Fist style. I, I, with these... Uh, because after a certain tier of technique, you very clearly jump over into the Shancho world. Uh, about the master level techniques, you're you're starting to dip your toe into real good, real powerful Shancha. And then the supreme level techniques are literally, I will blow this city up now. So I don't know how much Jade Empire goes that far with the the, the player available powers. But if you just wanted to focus on the lower tiers, uh, form techniques novice techniques and expert techniques i think almost any style in this game you could probably translate really easily Mm -hmm. Uh, with this one what i would do is i would i would almost if not entirely remove i would severely restrict the defensive powers uh lower facings on the die uh for it was one of the way i did it with uh, the um form techniques because with those it's just roll this die it can now be used for this and there's usually one facing the power of those is the higher that number the better it is in the math. So a defense that has a four is the highest that I allow defense to go. Defense is zero, kind of sucks. And I do have some styles where there's no defensive option in the form, so you're just stuck with whatever defense you happen to have as a character. Mm -hmm. And I might do that with this. 
But to compensate, I would do two... Well, actually, I'd probably do three things. Number one, I would up the damage on the offensive attacks and add another die. Or, you know, the, the equivalent of whatever tier that was. Another D10 of damage really matters in this system. It can really be the difference between a scratch that they're able to, to glance off in earlier rounds and something that pushes them past the threshold of a health box and gets them an injury that actually changes the nature of the fight. Uh, so that's a really good boon. Another thing I would do is I would definitely emphasize power and being able to break stuff. Um, it's it's I, It took a long time for me to finally find a way to add enough to what power could do and take enough away from what agility can do that they were actually close to on par. Agility's still a little bit better. Uh, but it's nowhere near the disparity most games give it because most games are your attack is agility and your movement is agility. So the bow is the best thing. This one is... You can move with agility, but you have to attack with an attack power. And power, thankfully, as a skill, kind of rides off that a little bit uh, more easily than agility does. So I thought it being a much better uh, balance for it. And so a power-based style is more viable. You don't ha you're not an idiot for not choosing agility, which was really important to me in the design. Um, the last thing I would do is probably the most interesting element of this. I like the idea of momentum and dominating space. So I think I would take usually expert level techniques, or the tier in which I start doing space domination. You don't just attack a person, you attack multiple targets or an area. I would probably push that down to novice and maybe even push a multiple attack, um, multiple opponent hit attack all the way down into the form technique. Mm -hmm. uh, because that way, you could actually, if you had enough initiative, establish a momentum early and set the tone of the fight. One of the things that's so important about like initiative and attacking first is that you change the value of dice. So when you're throwing attacks, you automatically take all the attacks your opponent can throw and make them have to reconsider them as defenses. So that's a really viable strategy. If you're fast and you can hit multiple opponents really hard, that's a technique that works. And when you actually balance it out with compensating and making it so that they have to seize that initiative or their defensive options are so crummy that they basically are on the receiving end of that kind of ass kick, it winds up being a very tactically crunchy and lopsided style that is a really fun strategic imbalance. So that's how I would translate that one in general terms. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, ne the next one is... What is actually one of the starters that you can pick from Legendary Strike? This is the uh, infamous starter I was talking about, mm -hmm. where uh, the strikes don't carry you for forward, like mm -hmm. at all. In fact, it, it literally says that uh, in the initial description on the on the wiki here, uh, your character will remain stationary throughout the attack animation, making it difficult Ooh. to close the gap to your enemy quickly. Yeah, um, but. Putting, but putting putting that aside, the in-game description is many in the Jade Empire have heard of Legendary Strike, but few have actually seen it in action. Fewer still have mastered this martial style, but those who have are to be feared. Their blows rain down too fast to block, and their kicks can quickly put an opponent out for good. Legendary Strike is all about kicks. It it, it <laughs> is it is kicks for days to the point where. I'd say I'd say I'd say they were prob they were probably taking some notes from um, Taekwondo when it came when it came to it. Hmm. Like if you remember if you remember the bodyguard from Drunken Master. Oh yeah, isn't that the guy that like stuck his foot like straight up in the air in that one scene? I think I think so. The whole thing is that it, that he that it that his whole f a good chunk of his fighting style was all about kicking. And finding new and, inter and interesting ways to kick. Yeah, uh, and in uh, Tekken 2, my favorite character was Beck Desan, who was a very kick-based dude. He was like the boss you got if you beat it with uh, martial law. By the way, martial law is Tekken on easy mode. It's a stupid crescent kick thing. <laughs> as soon as you start juggling people with that. No, like, no, fights, no. Tekken, Tekken on easy mode was Eddie. I don't know, man. Like... Once, once you got him on his back doing his breakdancing version of Capoeira, um, Eddie was kind of unbeatable. Them low attacks, bruh. Mm. And then they turned into an immediate oh, God, yeah, low attack. Why were low attacks so strong in that game? That was how Beck did it, too. Beck had this little thing, and he was, he was in two. He was a game before Eddie got in there. But Beck would hop forward, just like this little half frame, and then he would just scoot his foot out. He wouldn't really even do a low kick. He'd just kind of scoot his foot out and tap you. And as soon as that happened, you couldn't block. And that was the lead-in to these ridiculous... Because his next thing was, like, 
chin kicking you straight up into a juggle combo for like 10 hits. I love doing that. Like he he was he kicked you so high he had to jump and do spinning jump kicks to hit you. Like that was his finisher in one of them. I loved those kicks. So I've got kind of a softness for kick style. Also, and this is a little topical, uh, the new Cowboy Bebop live action thing is coming out. I hope they, they get the kicks. Spike's kicks are the coolest thing. Yeah, right? I, um, abandoned hope, ye who enter here is all I'm going to say. On uh, that. I, um, maybe there'll be good action scenes. I, I'll, I'll give it that much hope. You are kinder than me. I've already, <laughs> I've already written, I've already written it. I've already written I it know, off. Since I know. It's, I, I've I've seen a little bit of the controversy. I follow Twitter enough. That whenever a celebrity shows their entire ass to their own fan base, I usually get a good uh, get a good view of that. And so, yeah, I've I've seen some pretty stupid, cringy shit that got posted about it. On the other hand, uh, they had the stones to to cast a, a black man in the role of Jet Black. So that's going to be fascinating to hear people say to his face over and over. Mm-hmm. I- and they did. I mean, like, <laughs> no, but the, 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 given their proper props, that that took some stones or absolutely no forethought. No forethought. I'm gonna say it's absolute. Never Hanlon, ne- Hanlon's razor, my friends. Never attribute to malice what you can to stupidity. <laughs> but get, getting back to getting back to Mar- to um, legendary strike because of the because of the because of the fact that it's all, that it's that it's. Primarily a primarily a um, a kick a kicking based approach. And that that whole thing of not, of not moving while while you're kicking. Um, instead instead of excising that, I think I think I think that's something that can be that can be utilized to our to our advantage to give some advantages and disadvantages. I.e., um, the way I'm visualizing legendary strike in some in something like lone wolf fists is you is that you are you are a um, you are a defensive attacker. You're very very good at very good at get at getting at it at getting at anybody at anybody and keep and keeping having them keep their distance because of the threat range of your kicks. But you're not moving while you're you you're not going to be able to move around all that much. Yeah, actually, I I'm going to agree with you on that one. I think that the the lack of reach and the lack of momentum on this style should translate. Uh, maybe not to a lack of movement options, uh, although we can uh, downplay or otherwise take out agility in this case uh, for a skill booster. But I really think that that's something that should be translated. I actually like the idea of kind of being a character that's almost like a jackhammer, where getting the jackhammer to someone is the logistics issue you have to solve to kill them with the jackhammer. But once you get them, you have a jackhammer on them, and it works pretty well. Uh, I kind of it's interesting to think of a like, because I that's that presents the player immediately with a cool problem to solve. How do I get all these kicks directly into the throat of my opponent? And solving that problem is is fascinating because they could get a vehicle, or they could have some one of their friends, uh, like Colossus Wolverine, throw them like fastball special them over there, mm-hmm. or they could get another style and blend it with this one that gives them agility and speed boosters and movement boosters. So like, that's interesting to me. And it's, it's interesting to the kind of player that would take a style like this because you could compensate them with some really fascinating kicks. Um, and I like whenever a style does something that's kind of unintuitive. In this case, emphasizing your feet and not movement is really interesting to me. It's like, no, these, these are weapons. They are, not, they are not movement machines. They are killing machines now. I'll, it's, uh, it's fun. I'll be- I like that. I'll be perfectly honest. If you can pin somebody and then switch to legendary style, uh, their health, well, the health bar goes from full to empty very, very quickly. You know, I actually love that idea. Uh, so that's what I would do. I would I would nerf this thing's uh, movement a lot, and I wouldn't give it any range at all. And I would also make certain that instead of having a blend of arms, legs, and chakra uh, that it relies on, as most styles do, it would all be legs, and most of it would probably need both legs functional. So you've got a, it's a real kind of glass cannon style. Um, but to compensate for that, I would do something that I don't do with a lot of styles. I do this, I did this with um, uh, Hakuto no Shin, uh, like the, the signature best style ever in the game, the, the head exploding style, and I want to do it with this one too. 
I would make it so that your kicks could lead into other kicks. Usually techniques just are on their own. Mm -hmm. But in this case, especially with the novice levels, what I do is I would reduce the cost probably across the board and have a couple of kicks that are great finishers. And so what I would do is if you hit with one of the weaker kicks, that's like way, way less of an impact. Like maybe it's even a plus zero rank or something, something weird. Uh, it would immediately allow you to launch one of the other kicks that you've mastered. So you actually have effectively a two-hit combo. Um, I, I would have different ways to combine them so you get different strings of combos. Like, and, and with a kick style, obviously, you want to be able to do stuff like trip people and what have you. But I put a lot of interesting effects like that on it. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I would make a kick that made you faster than someone else if you'd hit them in a previous round. Um, because you've you've dazed them and like suddenly you're like you're in their face. I would make a kick that allowed you to uh, steal advantage from someone and give them disadvantage instead because you just completely bungle them. I'd probably have a kick for disarming. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you'd be a Swiss Army, a, a electronic revolving Swiss Army knife of kicks uh, that could combo together and seriously fuck someone up in the event that you could actually get to them. Yeah, and of and next is um is the is the mo is the most ra is the most rapid fire of them. Thousand cuts. Yep, thousand cut. Yep, thousand Ooh. cuts. By the name alone, you should tell what this is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Description is thousand cuts is aptly named, though the style does not involve blades. A master of this style relies on numerous light strikes in quick succession instead of, a, instead of singular punishing blows or thunderous kicks. Most opponents reel under such a relentless assault, unable to counter fast enough to find an opening for their own attacks. This is the closest thing to Atata that you're, that you're going to get in Jade Empire. And, the, uh, and the, the stance is very, 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 very similar to Shaolin Mantis. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, the entire style is extremely similar to Shaolin Mantis. Yeah. In martial arts nerd fact, I actually really love both of the Mantis styles. I think there's a northern and a southern one. And I love I love the way you hold your hands. I love how nifty you look, how the masters look whenever they do them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really cool styles. And I, I, I like that there's a tactical reason that they have their hands held like that. Um, you know, because you can use them for offense and defense. It's, mm -hmm. it's nifty. So I, I always found those very admirable as far as the classic Chinese styles. Uh, I like crane style a lot too, although admittedly crane style takes a fucking while to learn because you're supposed to learn like all of the weapon forms. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Uh, so with, with this style, uh, I mean, watata, like what can you say? It's, it's, it's pretty easy to make a, a style that does multiple attacks in this one. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that since it's got some roots in Mantis, I would allow a pretty robust suite of defensive options too. Probably defenses and counters. Uh, counters are pretty simple. They just they basically invert your defense into an offense, mm -hmm. make the other guy's offense into a defense whenever they hit you. That's pretty powerful. I usually keep that as a something that's closer to expert or a more expensive option. I might put that into the novice in this one. Um, and there might be something... Like a, a reasonably good defense uh, in the form technique too. The interesting part about the style is, of course, attacking someone a whole lot really, really fast, and that not each individual hit not necessarily doing a lot of damage. And I think there's kind of two ways to do that. You can do that the lame way, where you just give them a bog standard attack and you just fluff it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hate doing that shit. I, I really feel like if I'm going to take the effort to make a style. I should give the player some new tactical tool to play with, you know? Uh, so the challenge for this one would be, like, making it, like, decoupling some of the assumptions of uh, of a technique from the technique. Like, most techniques there, you spend X Prana, and you get a boost to an attack of a certain rank, and that kind of brings with it a boost to damage. But theoretically, uh, you could just have a set amount of damage. You could say, this attack does three damage period dot and you could crush the cost of that so far down that it would still be worthwhile to use it you could also make that something that you could just do over and over and over again mm -hmm. um i think for an expert level technique with this what i do is uh one of my infamous multi-hit things and i would i would what's something cool like roll 2d10 or 2d5 or something and that's how many rank one strikes you get a bunch of rank one strikes can can add up really quick to one really powerful attack. Um, 
but like if you limit it in the right way or, or you don't allow it to stack in the right way like you could say like a certain opponent can take no more than three strikes therefore the limit is you know effectively rank three although it's done in multiple smaller strikes mm-hmm. That's tactically interesting. It, it breaks up the expected sequence in a way that it gives you kind of this this little puzzle. You're like, well, because the first place that almost everyone who, who plays a game like this is going to go with it is, how can I use that to best effect? What if I used something with poison on it? There's an immediate idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what if I had some other way to change those strikes? There's very few, but they do exist uh, techniques that kind of stack with other techniques. Uh, called infuses. What if I got an infuse style and I infused all those weak attacks with something that like screwed with their chi or something? Um, and of course, the gut kala, all the different magic styles, a lot of them ride off of your ability to touch or prod the opponent. So, like if you were one of the, if you had like the doctor's art, I what it's called, um, you could use each one of those to screw with the way their chakras are aligned and give them some bizarre medical malady. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's all kinds of ways that could be really interesting if you think about it creatively. Mm-hmm. So that's probably what i do with that one. Yeah. Uh, those are at least a few ideas that spring out to I, me. I'd, I'd like to point out, um, I'm coming from the from the position of someone who has played through Jade Empire probably a little too much for his own good. Um, <laughs> Thousand Cuts uh, is actually paired really well with Leaping Tiger, even if Leaping Tiger is unupgraded. Because mm. you can create a, a an infinite loop combo by going from Thousand Cuts normal four hit before its final hit in its combo series, switch to Leaping Tiger to get its final hit, and then switch back to Thousand Cuts and start w- over without any recovery animations. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, so you, so you go, cool. you go, bap, 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 and then you do the sweeping, this sweeping, leaping Tiger Strike, which is actually fi- quite quick, quite powerful, and carries you forward. Mm. And then you go back to bap, 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 and, and you just do that over and over again. It is one of the best ways to cheap any boss battle in the game. Yeah. Pretty uh, cool, too. Uh, it's, it's, I love that kind of stuff. I really like whenever players think of creative ways to like give the, use the tools that you give them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe, maybe the biggest issue I have with like the White Wolf design community was that like as designers, people who made the games... They hated that. They were like, oh, no, that breaks the game. Now it's not fun anymore. Here's ways to fix it. Instead of leaning into the brokenness. The, the, the designers who did EX3 for a while were doing that, where they were leaning into the brokenness. And I think that was probably the right way to go about it. More player choice is always better, so long as those choices have value. Mm-hmm. Well, and the, the thing about it is, is you don't want the players to be able to cakewalk over the game either. Um it, it gets brought up a lot as a point of contention in White Wolf. I don't want to go too far on this tangent, but in White Wolf, most of the time, the bad guys and the good guys use the same rules. I honestly feel like when you get to the point where you could be the most powerful bad guy, there should be one boss battle between you and the end of the campaign because you're a god now. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that advice should be somewhere in the book. Yeah. Well, and uh, just to just to offer it here. Um, mm-hmm. In at least the Vampire the Masquerade books, um, the the suggestion was um, because of the generation that your vampires start at, they should never be able to get elder level powers. Oh, yeah, yeah, and Which Exalted was, broke that uh, rule. I, a lot of the White Wolf games broke that rule. Yeah. It worked super well in Vampire because you you had to you had to devour extremely powerful boss enemies, and you can only upgrade one of the players. They're vampires who have way different agendas. So it was this wonderful, like, um, Where is going? hunt mess. Well, it was it was a prisoner's dilemma. Each single time you got to a really powerful boss bad guy. Who diablerizes him, yeah. Who diablerizes him? Is that guy going to be the dude that kills us? Um, it's wonderful. So in Vampire, that worked great. In Exalted, you just have to find a time to train. Yeah. That's a very... It's a logistics problem, and the Exalted are really good at solving those... Unless until their great curse hits them, but that's uh, their... well, until their great curse hits them. That's yeah. neither here nor there, though. Yeah, uh, I, I would also like to point out that in the world of darkness, it isn't even consistent. Uh, yes, in vampire, keeping keeping power levels from power creeping too bad is is easier. In mage, no, you can become god in about three sessions if you're if you really really want to. Yeah. If it took mage my players is three fucking sessions, broken. I'd be <laughs> But I, I'd be stunned if it took three whole sessions. 
Yeah, but next, since you mentioned it earlier, um, Zan, next is Leaping Tiger. The best martial style in the game. Also also it known is, as the, the fucking tigers though. Yeah, and appropriately you end up get it you end up getting well claws. Yeah, nice. you get these little claws on the end of your hands that make you look like Wolverine. I don't mm. know that they're actually real or just a manifestation uh it's ne it's never it's never they never um they never it, they never reveal whether whether or not it's one or the other, but um the description is given with the vigor and speed of the animal for which this martial style was named leaping tiger dazzles onlookers even as it carves up opponents practitioners of this martial style focus so completely on the strength and quickness of the tiger that razor sharp claws seem to sprout from their fists the style's quick leaping techniques and punishing strikes create a flurry of death that can keep even armed opponents at bay I always uh, like whenever the the weapons and non weapons kind of get blended like that. I, I like the I, I mean, maybe that's the like core trope of Wuxia. Whenever your hands are lethal weapons, but I like when they re make that metaphor very real. Like in this case, that's cool. So uh, dude, that's cool. The hallmarks of of Leaping Tiger style, um, as you can probably guess from the first word. Uh, there's a lot of actual acrobatics involved in many of the moves. It's part of what carries mm -hmm. you forward. You, there's even a, a forward moonsault kick that it, from a standing position. You don't even really jump. You just kind of forward moonsault kick. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and then, of course, boom. yeah, you're, and you're, you're, you're fast, you're strong, but you're not the fastest or the strongest. Uh, the, the real benefit of it is the fact that it does carry you so far um due to the acrobatic nature you can keep up pressure unlike any other martial style in the game mm -hmm. uh and that's again commonly why the entire community is like yeah leap, leaping tiger just, just just go leaping tiger if you don't want to start with a character who has leaping tiger then use their shitty style until you can go buy leaping tiger once you first encounter zinbu in heaven mm-hmm the magical abacus. <laughs> who, sp who spends most of the time complaining about all all the shit you end up getting up to. Yeah, because... he has to... He used to be part of a department of heaven where he has to calculate all of the uh, bullshit you perform in life and death. And because he was uh, so bad at, at calculating all of the bad things you were doing, even though they were for good reasons, and, and keeping your mayhem down to a minimum, he's demoted to a... essentially a, a heaven merchant... You can go to your camp at any time and use him to buy shit mm -hmm. and sell shit. Well, that's hilarious. Also, I love the... I, I will never, ever tire of the, the idea of the celestial bureaucracy. There is something that just tickles me about it. It's pretty Chinese. It's, I mean, like, it's, it's pretty... It's pretty ch it certainly is, and I'd, I'd say... Um... I'd say the I'd say the the closest thing to an analog of the of that of the idea of the super, of the supernatural being being just as much of a royal pain as the real world is the way Terry Pratchett handles the supernatural like yep. just the way he handles death alone Mhm mm Remember a sword is a sword's not a toy it'll be a valuable lesson Mhm mm <laughs> I love the old comic oh, Yeah man. but um because I don't want uh, in the, I don't want to dwell too much on it, but instead, while death in Discworld has the gr has the Grim Reaper appearance, it's not a case where he where he di where he dislikes humans or he dislikes his job or or anything like that. He he likes humans because he he finds that they make the universe interesting. Hey, they do that. I will say that about human beings. Oh. They do make the universe a lot more interesting. There's also the fact that he um, he took on an apprentice at one point, and went and that apprentice had a daughter who, for all for all intents and purposes, is is um is te it was is technically his is technically his granddaughter. Since that I'm familiar with this, I, I've read a lot of Discworld, so. Oh. Yeah, I also saw the uh, the BBC special, The Hog Father, where they, strangely enough, were able to explain all that in a way that actually makes sense and hangs together really easily. Yeah, The Hog Father has one of the best death speeches about how, in order to be human, you have to believe in fiction. Mm -hmm. 
I loved uh, that speech. It's that's one of those kind of like because I've heard that quoted around uh, quite a bit. Like that one, that one changed a lot of people's minds. Well, it also it also goes into what it also goes in as um, Chuck had pointed out. It goes into why he, the auditors despise humans. And because humans believe in the impossible, and by believing in the impossible, they make it real. And of course, of course, the auditors want it, want everything to want everything to be as or as completely orderly as possible. Um, Pratchett puts the auditors and elves on two opposite sides of the spectrum. The auditors are the worst aspects of order. You know, they just they just want stars to burn at. Planets to spin, and and none of and none of the messiness that life brings. <laughs> um, whereas elves are treated as the worst aspects of chaos. So normal elves. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people make elves like bizarre and nasty enough in their home games. I always make them all fucked up. Anyway, let's, we should yeah. probably get back onto Rails. jumping at people yes. with your with your magical claws. So okay. Well, yeah, the, we're not so sure that the claws are there or not. For the for the player character in Jade Empire, those might actually be real because, as being a spirit monk, you have some additional powers that no one else in the Jade Empire has. You know, special special player character privileges, main character privileges. We all know about those. Um, yeah, so the the claws that. that appear on your hands might actually be real, whereas the claws that appear on any other any other enemy's hands might just be the whole. Uh, the part of practitioners of this martial style focus so completely on the strength and quickness of the tiger that razor sharp claws seem to sprout from their fists. Whereas with you, it might just be, yeah, these are spirit claws. You better stay the hell away from me before I actually carve you up. Yeah, I'd I'd <laughs> say I'd say I'd say when interp when interpreting something like this in in something like Lone Wolf Fist, there's one. There is um, one character who it, who instantly comes to mind from Hokuto no Ken that can oh. kind of be used as a template for the whole claws or not kind of thing. Ray. Yeah. Uh, and and I I accounted for Ray in um, in uh, the style that because I I kind of really loved the, and this may be my favorite or one of my favorite moments in a, in a show that is basically all about standout moments. I love when he just swipes across the guy and then in like horizontal segments like a cake, the guy moves over to the next frame one chunk at a time and it gets back together and then falls apart. Mm -hmm. That's such a great visual kill and it, it, it says so much about because like, like that's one of those, this is why you're watching the show kills. You know, it's not just brutal and violent. It's stylish in a way you haven't seen before. And I fucking, God, there's a reason I made this game. And it was yeah. for moments like that. And moments where you stick your thumbs into somebody's, into somebody's uh, temples to make their head explode. Yeah. Oh, that was a great. But I'd say, I'd say, I'd say given the, I'd say given the mobility, the cut, the cutting effects and, and the like with leaping tiger, the two, of the, the two of them are very analogous to each other. I think so. I think that because whenever I initially made that style, I was kind of lumping together a lot of different characters mm -hmm. uh, because I've only got fourteen styles in the book that haven't been paid for by backers. Like I wanted to limit what I was putting in the book so I could get it done. Like I love this. I could make styles forever, yeah. and you could really easily make a style just for him. You know. Uh, so I think I might take this as my opportunity to do something kind of like that. I actually really like the idea of a momentum base style that has like barehanded weapons because weapon archetypes are such a big deal in this game. Mm -hmm. If you have bare hands, you get an additional attack at a single die. That really changes the value of your dice whenever you roll them because a lot of times with effort, you'll roll them and you won't get any really hot pairs. You know, like you'll get like two zeros and two fours, and it's like, well, that's not great. But he rolls some high dice, like a seven and a nine. That's That could be cool if you could boost them. By being able to select both of them and say, these are attacks, you know, have, being, being barehanded actually has, like, a real advantage, because attacking somebody twice is kind of the equivalent of attacking them with a rank uh, two attack. Mm -hmm. When you do the math, it's pretty much how it works out. Um, 
So whenever you combine that with one of the other weapons, which is what uh, which is what uh, Five Gateways does, it gives you the ability to, uh, with all weapon fist, choose any weapon and add it to your bare hands. So you can have you can do the finger guns and shoot somebody, or you can kick uh, with the same reach and deadliness as a spear, or you could like ball your fist up and smash to somebody like a melon hammer, or you can just you know do the old karate chop and use your hand like a sword. That's really cool and versatile. Um, and you could choose one of those weapons and say, okay, your fists are just that sort of weapon. And if that was all the form did, that would still be pretty rad. Because you a, effectively, it's twice as difficult to disarm you because you've got to take out both of your fists instead of just one weapon. Um, and B, you never get that switched off. So if your hands were just as good as a balanced weapon, which is the sword analog, that fucking rules. Uh, especially if you could do like both attacks in a turn, because again, you can only tag weapons once. So if you get it, you get four dice, or between four and six dice, let's say you have five dice, you roll you know a seven and a nine. Those are great single dice to roll. If you could make both of those into a twenty-seven and a twenty-nine, that's unbelievable. Like that's actually really, really powerful. And if a, a single form gave you just that power, it'd be worth the buy-in. It's just that good, and it's it's. I like that because it's it's eloquent and it's basic and it's extremely focused. Um, it it actually might be too good even for that. I may have to be like, but if you want to use it a second time, you have to spend an effort die or something. Because I'm not I'm not charging any prana for that, so I got to charge some kind of resource. That actually might balance it out really well. Actually, I may have just designed a really cool form technique that I need to write up. Anyway, yeah, um, we just ga- we just gave you leaping tiger for your game. <laughs> yeah, enjoy everyone. That's the leaping tiger form style now. <laughs> that oh. first of all, I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, second of all, I like movement based styles that require close proximity to the enemy because that's kind of the opposite of the boring run away turtle and shoot strategy, the kiting strategy that I see as an emergent thing that happens whenever a designer doesn't really think about movement and distance in terms of like the tactical, the emergent tactical game that happens whenever you take a a closed combat system and put it into the universe of a role-playing game. Um, And I spend a considerable amount of time thinking about that shit, so it's much harder to kite in my game. It's not impossible, but it's much harder. But as as a corollary to making it harder, I wanted to make it more fun and interesting and active to do move forward and attack them with your bare hands kind of styles. So I, I'd like to design one that just does that primarily. Yeah. Now, the next one is one of those is one of those P, is one of those PC ex, PC exclusives. Um, it's the other. It's the other side to Iron Palm. Yes. Ooh. Iron Palm and Viper, which is the next one. Yep. Viper. We're added. Yeah, we're added as part of a uh, as part of the PC expansion, mm-hmm. um, and. Iron Palm is the open palm way, and Viper is the closed fist way. You, the the ways that you get these these particular styles is collecting three items throughout the game, mm-hmm. and some of the items are mutually exclusive. Specifically, the second item, the Fang of the Viper for Viper, or the Forge for Iron Palm. Ooh. Yeah, you I have like to... That. You either have to save a girl from pirate slavery and get her to stay with her mother uh, to get the the forge, or you sell both her and her mother into slavery to get the Fang of the Viper. Mm-hmm. I love that, though. I really do. I love whenever you have to make a, a either-or decision. Kind of like whenever the players find a ninja option lets them get both as well. Mm-hmm. I like setting it up so that that's very difficult. Yep. And... So now with Vi- Viper, um, it w- it's in game. It was used in game. It was used by 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 um, certain assassins, and I'll go I'll go into the in game description first. Viper emphasizes speed and unpredictability, alternately lulling the opponent with rhythmic movements and striking with incredible speed. Individually, mm-hmm. this style strikes are light, but they are only a part of its arsenal. Those who have mastered Viper's mysteries know a series of pressure points that can sour the blood and disrupt their foe's vital organs. Rare is the warrior who can withstand the lightning-quick strikes of Viper while being torn apart from the inside. Viper Ooh, is basically, really? a, it, as the name implies, is basically a snake style whose attacks don't do a whole lot of don't do a whole lot of damage, 
but are are very fast and poison. That's cool. Yeah, it, the only issue I have with poison, and it's it's a very difficult issue, is that it kind of only kills you. Uh, I think whenever poisons do more interesting things, they're better. Uh, but most things cause you to be sick and then die. So I think this challenge with this style, there'd be kind of two parts to it. I like the idea of a poison style. Uh, you could make all the stuff cheaper and like have significant drawbacks and deficiencies if you just got poison with them. Um so that would be one thing. The other thing would be, I would want to think, okay, this is where it gets really challenging. Uh, with poison, if I don't want it just to kill them, what tactically useful thing do I want it to do to them um, that would actually make it worthwhile to get more than one kind of poison and stack them and cross-pollinate them and what have you? And I might uh, I might think of like a series of restrictions that you could throw on them. Uh, probably, and uh, there's already something like this in the imbalance system, so probably just right off of the imbalance system. Uh, but I would want to program in a series of restrictions or or like can'ts and musts that they would have to do if they were hit with different ones. Uh, that would make them that would make you able to program them in different ways. Uh, so they have to attack the nearest thing, but they can't attack any of their enemies. Winds up being a very interesting way to make a berserker for your side all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they have to destroy terrain. Um, but they uh, can't use their weapons, might wind up just having them, you know, break both their fists and the terrain as much as possible in some kind of, like, self-destructive fury. Like, just little things like that. Like, can'ts and musts um, in categories are uh, probably my favorite thing to do with poison. Well, um, and um, something I, I you mentioned earlier, um, especially considering that Viper is described very similarly to Thousand Cuts, being you know fast quick strikes and the addition here is that it's it's got some sort of negative status or negative modifier to it mm -hmm. um maybe maybe viper would fit better as some uh, as an infusion style for your system rather than a full yeah, style you, it might be something like that or it could even be a gut kala where it just gives you like different ways you can screw with people because i'm fine with a style that is just like because Gut Kala are very much usually skill based, but they can also like add to attacks, and they have their own little mini attack system that just does imbalances. So I might call this a Gut Kala, and actually that works really well as like a sister style because at that point, um, it's not only opposite in terms of like its philosophy; it's also opposite in terms of how it approaches fighting in general. Um, so that might be a more comfortable place for it. Mm -hmm. I think you got a point there. Mm -hmm. um, even if I was going to put in disabling things in it, that's actually pretty cool in the system too, because when you disable someone's limbs, you disable whatever techniques rely on them having the use of that limb. So the kick guy, you know, whatever the, what was that? Heaven's gateway guy comes in and attacks you with his kicks. Legendary disable strike. One of his disable one of his legs. Uh, all of a sudden, this is a very different kind of fight. So, Hopefully he knows something to do with his with his arms. Yep. <laughs> you could pray for mercy, as it won't come. <laughs> so. So next, it next is um. White demon. Yes, white de white de white demon. White devil. That's if, if, if if I had to describe white demon, it is iron palm, but kicking. Iron Palm has the big, wide strikes and, and large hits, and is slow. Mm -hmm. White Demon does these big door kicker kicks as part mm -hmm. of its kicking. Like, you you kind of lunge forward in the animations when you're kicking. And the only punch I remember in the White Demon style is your power attack, which is a giant-ass backhand. You your, do a backhand Your area fist. attack is a ground pound as well. Oh, man. Yeah, but I count that as, really like, a full-body thing. Yeah, that's the only thing, though, like... Because you don't really want to have a style that's that similar to another one, you know? If they kind of do the same thing, but with different limbs, it doesn't feel like a significant enough change to me to make sure it's, like, you know, distinctly different. So I'd want to do something different with it. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe you could combine a little bit more of, like, momentum with this one. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, with legs, I think there's an implied momentum, like I said earlier. It's, it goes against the grain to assume that legs aren't going to move you forward. Uh, so, I mean, like, you could you could do, like, flying kicks and things. I think I actually even have a flying kick somewhere in the system, somewhere of the hundreds of techniques I designed. So you could do something like that, where, uh, where you have, like, kicks that move you around and, and uh, uh, kicks that just hit really hard. I'd say, I'd say um I'd say the theme that the theme that I'd probably go that I'd probably go with when it comes to something like White Demon um because of the fact that we're not we're not um restrained to the rock paper scissors setup is this is this is the this is the anti kite um setup I just catch them and kick them to death kind of setup it's it it is for it is for those it is for those who want to pun it who wants to punish um, opponents that like to play defensively? And I actually kind of like the idea. And I've always, I always love the flying kick. Like that's like the coolest move in any martial arts thing. You don't, you don't see enough flying kicks. But yeah. I like the idea, especially in this setting, of like being in a moving combat, like on bike back or something like that, and just launching yourself like a cannonball through some motherfucker's bike with your foot. Mm-hmm. Um, Common that would just what? be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but rider kicks go through everything. We've seen it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes up to and including planets. <laughs> give me, give me another game, guys. I, I gotta get this one done first. The Planet Crackers are next game. I promise. Ah. So, um, ne- now the next one is technically Willow, but I'm saving that. I'm saving that for in styles because that was that was cut. Um. From the from the final game, but it was restored in the in style mod. Um, so next it would be the would be the four would be the four magic styles. And truth be truth be told, because of the fact that that it's all about the I I mentioned the four in that in that sense because they're all, all the same. Of, yeah, for all intents and purposes, the only thing that changes the, changes is the element that you're flinging around. And that's what status you ex- you ex- you expend upon the opponent. Yeah, yeah, and that that works really well in a video game where there's a little more immediacy to that. But like, and there's kind of a reason for it. See, different terrain implies different terrain type enemies. Uh, but yeah, in a in a tabletop role playing martial arts game, that's not enough variety. You probably just make it one. Um, die. The I'd say I'd say the main th- I'd say the main thing that changes is the is the is the is the way the heavy attack works for them, the way the heavy huh. attack and sometimes the area attack works for them. Um, die, like dire flame, dire fl- actually just the area attack for most cases. Dire flame, for instance, has it has it that you that you um that you end up su- you end up summoning this appearance of a dragon around you that does a that does a close range cone attack, um, which then does a dot. Called immolation. Yeah. Um, ice shard drops a, it drops a drops a big fucking chunk of ice uh, in the in the distance. The power attack sh- uh, freezes enemies in a large ice crystal yeah. though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, stone stone immortal. You cause a ground quake as your area attack. Yeah. And and you can turn people to stone. Yep. And Tempest is you. Um, its power attacks. Its power attack does the um, not sends people sends people, sends the target airborne. In fact, that in fact both the power and area attacks has as the enemy get um, airborne. It's just that the area attack does it to multiple enemies. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you raise them into the air so that you can then pick at them at your will. Yeah. Most of the, um, except for Dire Flame, uh, the, the three other magic styles, when they inflict their their particular status effect, it's always a status effect that leaves the enemy somewhat helpless. Mm-hmm. Whether they're frozen, petrified, or airborne, um, they're stuck in one place. They can't do anything. And you can continue to hit them and do damage. <laughs> It's like paralyzing palm, but not nearly as uh, long, and also um, requires you to use a magic style, which means you're expending chi. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, well, more chi than you would be with Paralyzing Palm, because I believe as a support style, Paralyzing Palm also uses chi. The the paradigm is a little bit different, and and the way they incentivize it is different too. I, again, I, I like that you have to punch and kick your enemies for a while to kind of like build up juice. These really powerful moves to kind of alter the the character of the fight. I think that's really cool. I, I sort of wish I'd thought of it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, with these, I almost like I kind of already designed them because I have a bunch of elemental styles in the game. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the Earth one is having an Earth romance. Uh, the fire one is Atomic Dragon Fist. Let me see if I remember them all. Uh, Divine Breath is the air one. What's the water one called? Supreme Ocean Devil. That's the one. Uh, so I have versions of those things, and they, they work similarly. With, with all of those things, like wind kind of implies you can move the enemy around with your wind. Water, you can freeze them. Uh, fire has the, you know, can, setting them on fire, so it is like an ongoing and destructive base thing. And with the earth, just being able to reshape the scenery and trap them or smash them with stones is just extremely effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are already kind of like tactically built out. I will say that all of those styles only give you one kind of element each. Um, which I thought was a good way of focusing it and limiting it and kind of uh, giving characters a reason to get multiple masters. But you could conceivably have a style which was just, like, instead of classic punches and kicks, it was just being able to do the elemental stuff and just doing multiple elements. Like, let's, let's, not beat, let's not beat around the bush here. All four of these are basically element bending. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, here. Well, and that's the thing. It's, a, it's not like element bending originated in Avatar The Last Airbender, but in terms of immediacy and, like, doing it with, like, a panache that really had a big impact, Avatar, man, they they really stuck the landing. So that's always my go-to. Like, if I need a visual of someone throwing around, like, martial arts elements, I go to Avatar. It's beautifully put together. They consulted real martial artists. They have a really good blend of original content and uh, and actual, like, you know, different kinds of cultures, mysticism, and mythology. Um, they have incredibly well realized characters. The fight scenes are big, and they they, have, they do different things. They have wars. They have like smaller fights, uh, fights at different power levels, fight between fights between beings of very vastly different anatomies and power levels. Avatar fucking rules. Um, and the bending, you, like you can almost can't help but steal it nowadays. You, yeah, the, you can you can tell he's gushing about just Avatar. Yeah, the <laughs> the reason the reason why I um. The reason why I I bring I brought it I brought that up is because I I honestly I honestly think that try that trying to trying to put trying to put these the magic styles down to a specific technique or or the like um might un, might um might undercut them. It would. You don't want them to be one technique. As a matter of fact, each of those styles has one of those techniques at each of its ranks, and its ultimate move is like. Again, think of Aang going full ham with that uh, particular element. Yeah. That's what it does. Mm-hmm. So there is a huge amount of space for these. Because, I mean, in addition to being something that a martial artist could throw around, I'm also effectively designing the rules for if they get caught in a tornado, or a volcano, or a firestorm, or an earthquake. I, it, it was a two for one. I, I can't resist that kind of design. Mm-hmm. Now... So. Yeah, they've been well developed, I guess is what I'm now, saying with are, this one. Um there are two styles that are referred to as other styles because of the fact that you don't that um that well one one of them one of them is one of them is a bit is a bit of an odd duck and the other one um does doesn't tech do doesn't damage te- doesn't technically fit. Um I'll fo- the one I'll focus on the non-damaging one when we do when we do support styles, but for the, but for the other one that is drunken master. And in the game, drunken master is a temporary style. Um you have to lug around a follower named Henpecked Ho, who is a master of drunken style who can't p- practice anymore because his wife has told him he's to stop drinking. Thus Henpecked Ho. Um Oh my God. He, he throws bottle, bottles of wine out onto the battlefield every, uh, you, you know, periodically. You pick it up, your style immediately changes to Drunken Master, and you get a timer. Mm-hmm. Um, for the duration, you can use Drunken Master, which can be fun. But it is your typical Drunken Master. It is 
outright. If you've watched Jackie Chan do Drunken Master, if you've watched mm -hmm. anyone do Drunken Master, who is a master of the style, you know what this is. Sure. Um, I actually love Drunken Master style. It's one of my all-time favorites. And it's an offshoot of monkey style. It's actually called Drunken Monkey in the original Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, and I like monkey style because I, I like the idea of... And, and drunken, the Drunken Master style is kind of like an offshoot of this idea where your movements are chaotic and unpredictable and that gives you an advantage that kind of inflates their value past their normal value. M Monkey style, of course, is... A, and, and if you see Jackie Chan in The Legend of Drunken Master, it's Jackie Chan. Like, it's a very acrobatic style. There's a lot of unusual and unexpected movement. It's hard to train for that, but once you do it, it inflates the power of your individual attacks because they have this additional degree of surprise. Um... It's kind of easy to get surprise in a game where you can have stealth-based styles, and I want to stay out of that with it. That's A, a little bit too easy, and B, a little bit too boring. I would actually want to be able to do something that the opponent could not predict. Whoever is playing the, the character of the opponent could not predict. Like, I would want to be able, with a style like that, A, first of all, I love that it's temporary. I want to get back to that. But B, what I would want it to do mechanically is... You launch a certain attack, and then after the opponent cho chooses a defense, you change it for a different one. It is a different character. Um, I think that would be a really cool power. How, um, how, I, about, the, how would... about this? Um, you need in order. You need you need out. Al you need alcohol in order to do it. Um, yep. You would have to be drunk. Higher which is and which is which here... is funny because in 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 real life. Performing you're sober any, as a judge any, doing it. You're yeah. sober as a judge because if you aren't, you will lose your balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be extremely focused with real drunken styles. Um, I'm what I'm thinking is that it, is that every time you every time you every time you consume, um, the, um, bo every time you consume booze, you get a ch you get a charge, and that is the fuel that you use in order to do that kind of switching. I just make it an imbalance. You get the stone drunk imbalance. The worse the imbalance is, the more the more juice you get every round to do drunk drunken style. I'm willing, I gotta naturally I'm willing to naturally balance it. Yeah, I'm willing to go with that that as well. the The key thing is just putting some sort of limitation to a keep you drinking and b and b um make it make it so that it make it so that you can you can't um that you can't just use the thing every single round. Yeah, I, I, and I would definitely do it where it's kind of using it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd put a couple of restrictions. First of all, you can only consume enough alcohol in a given round, which is like a few seconds at most, to get one more level of drunk. Uh, second of all, there needs to be significant drawbacks to uh, the way being drunk works, and I think they should make your actions less predictable to you. Like, for instance, um, you could just have the, the uh, GM roll a D10 for every... Uh, um, level that you are drunk and every zero they get to spend some of your actions doing something you didn't expect yeah that'd be a really bizarre way to make that work yes the i'd especially i especially go with the idea that the since you mentioned drunken master that the stronger the alcohol is the str the um the, Ooh, the more cool. stuff you can do because if you remember at at the climax of that fight, he ends up going through he ends up going nuts after drinking some industrial strength shit. Yeah, and actually that's great because it's not as though different levels of potency of wine and things like that didn't exist in Chinese mythology. That's great. I love the idea of an, a drunken master going on a quest for some amazing booze. Mm -hmm. Like that is that is some really good lone wolf fist energy right there. Yeah. I mean, remember that one of the eight immortals is a drunkard with a cripple, Love a drunkard, it. a drunkard, a drunkard who is crippled, but has a strong right leg. <laughs> strong right leg. It's true. That's one of the eight immortals, eight Taoist immortals, folks. Mm -hmm. And I love those moments where the character had showed up in a, an eight immortals movie or in a Mad Max movie it would still kind of work. Those are the perfect characters for the Wolf Fists. So I kind of love Drunken Style. I, I'm sort of surprised I didn't even think about it. That's yep. weird. Um, well, now you have an idea. Yep. I know. They're going to put that in the next supplement. Going to have to. Now, next is the support styles. And the thing about support styles is that they tend to they tend to infl they t they tend to be the means of indirect combat. 
A lot of them, mm. except for one exception that we'll get to, um, does does not do damage, but what it but inst but they instead inflict some sort of status effect. Mm. Um, and typically they're used as setups for um, harmonic combos that are followed through with martial or or uh, magic styles. Mm. Um, it's kind of cool. Like I said, these are the, these are the style at, at the beginning. The, like I said, these are the styles that you use them so that when you finish off with a marshal, you get a specific resource orb. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a touch difficult to translate. I, I've made. I, healing... I had no plans on translating the whole harmonic combo thing. Yeah, totally right. but you could conceivably make a style which was just lumping all of those kind of like leftovers together into one thing mm -hmm. and make it where as a style it's kind of limp. When you combine it with other styles, it's really strong or a really good thing to kind of like you know bleed into different styles with. That's not an inconceivable design space. Actually, it's kind of nifty because it would mean it actually is the weakest if you're a dedicated master of it. So it'd be really rare to get dedicated masters of it because they wouldn't be very good fighters. They'd be they'd be good for wartime situations though. If you uh, have a whole bunch of people. Yeah, they'd be invaluable as advisors and as masters. They wouldn't actually themselves be good. They, they'd be the silver medal of the martial world. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. That's actually kind of great. Uh, again, do, that's fascinating. Do I, do I have to quote it? I have to quote it. You have to quote if it. If you ain't first, you're last. And there you go. Talladega Knights. But we'll st um, before I get to before I get to the two um, the the two exceptions to the rule, I'll start w I'll start with Heavenly Wave. Which um, its in game its in game description is, fighters skilled in Heavenly Wave learn techniques that can slow their opponents to a crawl. While the support Ooh. style does no damage on its own, a master can manipulate the chi in the area around opponents, rendering them sluggish and easily defeated. Even the most lightning Ooh. fast of foes can be slowed to a turtle's pace with the skillful application of Heavenly Wave. Ooh, I like that. It also kind of goes along with my theme of completely screwing up kite-based fighting. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of have a weakness for that. I, I would want that to be a thing a style could do, but I feel like in a game in which your response time is really important, that's really powerful and good enough to have its own stuff. With a game like this, I'd want to combine that with another theme. So that would be like one of the legs. The other leg would be something else. I don't know. Um, good defense. Something. Something. You know, like that. Um... Because I like the idea of slowing down your opponents instead of just moving faster than them. That's neat design space. Uh, and there's a really easy way to screw with the initiative system where you could just um, uh, like make them re-roll initiative at the lower levels. And at the higher levels, you could like roll a d10 and subtract that from bid initiative or something really mean like that. Uh, or swap initiative between characters. Like that's that's nifty design space. And I don't think it's inconceivable that you could master a martial technique that lets you like pop through reality or screw with time or something. Why not? You know? I mean, like, At this that is point, a you're definitely hitting Xian Xia. Mm -hmm. uh, it, <clears throat> true, but I mean, this is a game <laughs> in which one of the martial styles was learned, quote-unquote, because a, a deformed woman ate a dying sea god. That's the yeah, you're, origin you're, you're, of the style. <laughs> Xian Xia, for sure. Hell yeah, man. Well, I Xian love Xia it. Is really, well, Xian Xia is really, really good for this is mythic history, and now we're playing, you know, with this this thing where we've been learning and teaching the style like normal people, uh, because it doesn't ever really cross out that in-game Shansha toe dip that you get with Lone Wolf Fist. Like the in-game of of this game is supposed to get you into the cosmic, ludicrous, kill six billion demons shit that the next game is going to do. So again, it's on the horizon. But yeah, I, I love I love Shansha. I, I can't get enough of it. It's it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous like modernization of mythology, like the whole Jack Kirby thing. I, I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, hev um, heavenly, wa heavenly Wave. Heavenly Wave. It's, um... it's your slow. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, as a, you said martial technique rather than martial style. Could this be another one of those, uh, another one of those styles from, from Jade Empire that you'd take and maybe make into uh, part of your, your imbalance system or Maybe a, another infusion right. style of some sort. I really feel like 
what I would probably do is take this and some other idea, and I'd combine them together to make a style. I don't. I think that just like initiative and time manipulation isn't quite enough. It needs it needs like that's a really good opener. Hey, you can screw with initiative with this, but then you need like the follow through, like. What weapon does it use? How does it seek victory? It's like building a, a blue stasis deck without any way to deal damage. It's like, well, yeah, it's cool you can do stasis, but, like, how do you win? Like, the seat needs a way you, to win. You, you win by making everybody hate you. That's how blue works! Eh, you know? I, I, played, I played blue, white, mother, may I life gain decks. Don't even, don't even test me on this one. I don't need any more... I already didn't need any evidence that you were a monster, Zan. Don't don't give me more fuel for the fire. <laughs> there is a reason why he is the bane of my existence. You strike me as a kind of a green deck player, there, Miltra. Anyway, honest, honestly, no. I um, I think the the last the last deck that the last deck that I used was um green white. Oh really? Mm hmm. Um, that, yeah. that was that was during my that was during my Mirrodin days. Um, I ended up using a I ended up using a, bla I ended up using a black white deck when I was when I um when Kamigawa was a thing. Oh man! Just so I could we, we just so I could abuse, about. just so I could abuse ninjutsu. Oh, you you starting to make me feel old. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so next is um, hidden fist or. Oh, A.K.A. Pocket Sand. <laughs> <coughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is a my highly classified technique. My name is Rusty Shackleford. Pocket Sand! <laughs> <laughs> but... Paint the fist, governments out to get me. Hidden Fist's description is... Warriors willing to tread a darker path learn that a confused mind is a weakened one. This infamous support style is a collection of techniques that render the, pr the practitioner's foe disoriented and unable to fight back. A master of Hidden Fist is not above using dirty tricks and forbidden strikes to, ser to serve the goal of total domination. This, the, whole th the whole thing is, ver is very much about, um, ab about, about, dis about disorientation. Admirable. It's it's an interesting way because I do have a dirty tactics uh, style and I have a ninja style, which is kind of also the like assassin and poisoner style. But I don't have a specific disorient you with sand to your eyes kind of style. That's that's one hair too specific that I haven't actually made it. Mm -hmm. I think I think there's. You know what? I I'd almost want to make it a gupt kala though, like just. Just because there's two kind of there's sort of two ways to go about ninja, uh, especially this kind of like more slightly more realistic like gorilla style like ninja. You can do the like kabuki style like run around super fast, hide and throw in poison stars kind of thing, but you can also equally do the kind of like mystical ninja uh, where it's all about like poisoning and weird breath techniques and actually you hit a log instead of me. Um, and I think I might do the Mystic Ninja uh, if I was going to translate that. Uh, I, would, I would grab more ninja stuff, and I'd say, okay, we're going to do ninja, but as a Gupt Kala. And I would put in the Disorientation stuff and the Misdirection stuff in there with uh, whatever weird kabuki tricks I could think of. Uh, and, and just make it a, a thing that you didn't... It, it would be a flavor of ninja you had any kind of character at that point instead of being no I've I've taken the ninja techniques it's like no 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 I've taken the ninja secret arts so I've got a I got a bag of tricks I can ninja with anything now so that's what I would do with it all you need is blue hair a pipe <clears throat> and hitting people with koban coins and you've got yourself a new game its name is mystical ninja starring goemon <laughs> this glad I I, I, I'm only assuming that's not a Naruto joke, um, and if it isn't, you took the moral high ground. Oh, and if it, it is, I didn't it, it need is, further evidence. You're a monster. <laughs> it's a, it's actually a reference to a very old SNES game. It's okay. It's all right. I'm still going to consider that the moral high ground. You're redeemed from your blue deck playing by thirty percent. You're still seventy percent a complete bastard. But let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. 
So next is the is the is the one that Zan has been talking about being uh, being over being overpowered, and that is paralyzing palm. Ooh, yeah, we were talking about that one a lot. <laughs> Let's see. This yeah, and your thing is getting paral and I've noticed this because there's a paralyzing palm move in this because of fucking course there is. <laughs> you know, you can hit their pressure points and paralyze them. I actually had to errata it because of how ridiculously powerful it is just to paralyze someone. Like that's a death sentence, right? They couldn't attack, they couldn't defend themselves. They just sit there and die for the rest of that entire round. Even one round of that was crushingly powerful. So Guess I'll learning. die. <laughs> yep. Oh, you hit me with your quivering palm strike? Guess I'll die. That was it. I had ex I had characters that were several degree ranks higher than my starting characters who was doing this, and he would poke them one time, get literally one attack through, and that was it. It shut down their whole first turn, and they were a sitting duck, and they just dropped like flies. So, yeah, I, I had to errata it. I had to errata it where you could take your effort pool instead and say, you could spend these dice on the first round you're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it really is that much of a difference. So, again, lesson learned. Yep. But... The description for Paralyzing Palm here is, This esoteric style has a sinister reputation, but many peaceful masters prefer it for its ability to render an opponent helpless without killing him. More unscrupulous masters take advantage of the style's paralyzing blows to weaken foes for the killing blow. It's designed around its magical palm strikes, which can stop a man in his tracks with a single hit. And, uh, just as a note, to get this particular style in jade empire you have to take the open palm way for a specific quest that's the only way to learn it otherwise you get the the last one uh that we talked about the uh the hidden fist from yeah, the bad is... guy mm -hmm. i'm gonna be honest this is one of the this is one of the few points in the game where even if someone is playing a full-on rat bastard closed fist player they tend to go open palm because of the fact that even though a uh, paralyzing palm is quote unquote more effective when you have higher open palm points. It's not enough of a change that a closed fist player who's looking to min max will will get paralyzing palm to absolutely wreck house. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I'd say I'd say the I'd say the key th the key thing with this because for all intents and purposes, um, this isn't too far removed from the good old stunt from the good old stunning fist, and. Really is it, it's it's I mean there's not enough that I could make it really distinct. Mm -hmm. The the key th the key thing the um key thing the key thing with it would be what is the is the fact that you'd have is how is how you'd um how you'd prevent stun locking, which is it's an issue that happens with stunning fists, and it's an issue that happens a lot with any sort of skip turn kind of effects. Uh, Any time that you can just take someone's actions out of the action economy, you you give them a death sentence. Um, so, so yeah, it, the, the way that I wound up softballing that was saying, okay, you still have to take some kind of penalty if you're hit with this, because it still needs to be fierce, but instead of it being you can't attack and you can only defend and you're limited in your description of the defense, mm -hmm. you can just spend your effort uh, equal to the, the rank of the technique. So, you know, they hit you with a rank one, Okay, your one effort die down. That is tough, especially in early rounds, but it's not like shatteringly powerful. And weaker characters that can't spin that are paralyzed, which means it still actually does paralyze a good enough amount of the time that it doesn't feel like everyone can move through it all the time. So that's a reasonable balance between the extremes, I think. Yeah. Um, it, so yeah, I, I sort of already have a style that does this because we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, Fist of the North Star here. Now I know I know that I know that you're hit I know that you're hit you're hitting your particular um t your particular time limit and I mentioned that I was gonna skip over transformation styles but when it comes to um what when it comes to when it comes to we when it comes to weapon styles I'm of two minds we we can either we can either go we can either power th power through those because a lot of them is just a case of a different a different weapon um. That that's but it's still operating under the rules of of the magic weapons within this system, 
mm. or or we can or we can save that and blend that into when we do um when we do the in, when and blend that into doing the in style um material at a later date. We could do a part two of this. I'm not opposed to that. Uh, if you think there's enough material, we could valuably do another uh, one about this size with it. Yeah, yeah, because there are because there's there are several new styles that are added in um in the in style mod. Okay. And then there's the last support style we haven't discussed that is changed between its base form and this one. Yeah. Okay, well, well, why don't we, can we do, can we finish it off with that one on this one, and then when we pick it back up on part two, we could lead with that one. That would yeah. be a really good bookend. So the, the last style that I want to cover, that's a, that's in the, uh, that's in the other styles. I want to do the, in, there's two, um, is Spirit Thief. Spirit Thief Ooh. is similar to a support style, but instead of dealing, instead of dealing, da instead of dealing damage, um, it steals chi. That's cool. It also um, the the primary uh, identifier of how its uh, how its uh, fighting form works is um, the hand movements are Shaolin sword finger. Hmm. Um, so you know it's it's very very pointed as a system goes because mm -hmm. uh, you're striking specific points on the body to disrupt chi flow rather than disrupt actual pressure points. Mm -hmm. And drain them of their chi and steal it from them. Thus, the name Spirit Thief. Yeah, that's. I don't. I don't, I don't believe I have a Prana Steely style. I probably should have put one in. I know I've got a Prana Disrupty style. Um, the Psychic guys can can counter your spells basically. So they're they're the blue mages. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, and actually, because of the way Prana is just like an escalation uh, through the rounds. Um, I think that style could stay viable later on, too, because obviously it's really crippling when you only have a limited supply of prana to get it stolen from you. Uh, but in later rounds, you have so much that, like, it, like the, the value of it changes and the amount of attacks you can throw changes pretty significantly, especially around, like, three or four. Like, around three or four, everyone's throwing around huge amounts of prana. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to bet that I could actually just make a style and, like, have a, a core backbone of techniques. There's a way to design a lot of styles. Uh, that are different levels of I steal your prana. And the cool thing about that is, is because they would cost prana to get, there would effectively be an exchange ratio whenever you grabbed it. So instead of it being, I'm going to take an attack that's free for me, take three of your prana, and I get three prana with a six prana swing, you could say, I'm going to pay 12 prana for this attack, but I will steal up to 20 of yours. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking 20 of your prana away and denying you 20 prana, and I am receiving 8 prana as a benefit. It, that's a much smaller swing overall, but it still contains the elements of both. So I really think you could design a whole style around that. I feel like, because really what you need for a style, the, the spine, the backbone of a style, is an idea you can scale. Mm -hmm. um, the element styles all scale the different like levels of catastrophe that the element can do. The weapon styles I made are all very similar. Uh, taking a weapon from its concrete tackle use to a more conceptual use, um, all of them, all of them have a big idea that can can balloon out as it gets bigger, and that's an idea that does that. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think there's a lot of potential in that one for a style. I would. I am considering one caveat, um, sure. just to just to keep people from hoarding. Um, if you, um, that, pr the prana that you steal, you can't, you can't, it is temporary. You gotta, yeah, it's gotta, you gotta be, use, use it, it or lose it. You gotta use it. You have, you have one round that you can use it. If you don't, you lose it. I, I would honestly say that you would have to immediately buy a technique with it. That way it would reduce bookkeeping. Because what you see in a lot of times, and if you have a, uh, and there is a particular part of the the round at the end of it where you kind of do cleanup it's like the equivalent of the cleanup phase in magic the gathering mm -hmm. even still i would rather it be do it now so you don't forget it because a lot of times things will drop off in that end phase because so much goes on in a round and the value of what's going on fluctuates between a round that like that you can you could lose a little piece of bookkeeping like that uh so and since it's going to be your turn when you're stealing their prana anyway um, you could do it in two different ways. If it's not your turn, you could spend the prana on another different defense um, immediately against the same attacker. And if you are attacking them, you have to spend it on another attack. Just right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be the easiest, cleanest way to do it. You could do it the other way. I suspect that it would get complicated if you added another step. Yeah. 
Oh. And then the, the very oh. final support style is Storm Dragon. Which now here now here's where things get interesting. Um, Storm Dragon initially was a was a support style that um, that essentially stunned because you're basically za you're basically it's electrocuting basically, them. Yeah, it's a you're it's a martial stun gun. Um, the in style mod changed changed it so that instead uh, instead of do, instead of doing that, it is the sister to Spirit Thief where you can use it to recover focus. Hmm. Hmm. I, I do actually have a focus stat in this game. It, it doesn't work quite the same way, but I don't actually have a whole lot of martial arts styles that screw with it. I I do in um, above heaven. Oh, above heaven, I actually have a style. One of the core moves it has is it gives you an extra focus slot that only works on certain kinds of uh, certain kinds of things you roll. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really nifty design at the time, but it, it wound up being too it wound up being too powerful and digging in too much of the bedrock for it to be something that's translatable into Lone Wolf Fist really cleanly. Um, but I don't really have any style that screws specifically with focus, like giving you additional focus slots or anything like that. I, I probably should dig back into that conceptually. I, I abandon it. Because I, for the paradigm of the 14 styles in this game, I basically have element styles and weapon styles and a few styles that are just kind of weird or, or more thematic than elemental or weapon. Like I've got one that but turns you into Rebi Ra from uh, uh, Demon City Shinjuku and I've got one that is just uh, the Hakano Shinkin. So there are a couple of just weird, fascinating styles. But they're primarily, almost all of them are a weapon or a certain kind of element. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really myself the sort of like elbow room that I gave myself in uh, All Above Heaven where you have styles that are way more thematically complex or have a lot more like basic they, they don't look as much at basic game mechanics like that and say okay how do we how do we give you something that's like a game with this um, mm -hmm. it's it's not terrible design space like I said I've already used it before um, I should probably I might I might take that as an excuse to dig into focus as uh, something that could be a somewhat more active part of the fights. It seems to have lost a little bit of a spotlight, ironically. So the focus has less focus in my uh, in my current take. The focus has less focus. It does. I said it. We're gonna end on a dad joke, people. <laughs> well, we get we gotta have we gotta have at least one. But we will um, now. Obviously, we won't we won't be doing a part two next week because give because mm -hmm. given. Given the time, given the timing, it, it's just it, it just isn't going to work. But we will be back with this on a, on a future date. It may it may not even be it may not even be a Sunday. We'll we'll figure we'll figure that out later. And we shall see. Of course, I, of course, I've still there's still going to be a fair amount of um of 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 assorted of assorted crazies um come um come coming our coming our way and. Well, and th um, thank you for thank you for being for being willing to work with this particular bit of um, crazy with this crazy little idea, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it, this has been my pleasure. I've had such a good time. Yeah. I, I love good. I love coming to the the monastery. Dan was also here. Um, less said about him, the better. <laughs> <laughs> really now? <laughs> really? He said it, oh. not me. <laughs> True. Yeah, but I know what you were thinking, monk. <laughs> Remember, I'm just saying what two thirds of us are thinking, and I'll see what the problem. Two thirds? I think that's an overestimation. <laughs> oh, it's it's an overestimation that two thirds of us are thinking because you know you're here, Zan. You're right. I'm the only one thinking. The two thirds of you are the ones not thinking. Ah! He turned it around on me. Curse your evil style. All right, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Cut the mic, milk. Counter spell, <laughs> bitch. Counter spell. Yes, up, down, down over and through, back around. The joke's on you. Okay. But, of, but of course, there will be there will be plenty more madness to madness to come. I should be back into into getting into the review um, swing. I'm sorry that Fighting Games Month did not go as planned because uh, because the muse just decided to die when I got sick. But I should but I should be I should be back into it just in just in time for the end of the abominable summer. So until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.